All righty, welcome back to part three. I am so excited. I've got Brother Steve Jones with me today, and in part one and two, we went over safety features and how to pack the jars. We're canning meats today. And so now we're going to, we, we've got it ready to go. And I'm going to let him explain to us how we actually process these jars. So okay. you want to hold up a jar yeah. and show. Now we've got seven jars in here. This is chicken breast with all types of mm -hmm. flavoring. Do mm -hmm. you can tell them the flavorings you put uh, in I added a mirepoix and we added some poultry seasoning. Um, I added a little bit of garlic to some of mine and uh, extra thyme, but you can customize it to what you like. This Pink is, Himalayan right. salt and a tablespoon or teaspoon of vinegar, apple cider vinegar with the mother. This is the sirloin with yes. potatoes mm -hmm. I mean, and carrots. We just added flavors, different, each of these jars are gonna be different flavors because I wanna taste what they all taste like. So that's a good thing you can um, customize it to what you like. Okay, this is uh, the old Presto, which I've had many years. They still sell these new. Mm -hmm. They do sell them new. Uh, the main thing is make sure your seal is on perfect and yes. good. Yeah. That's the key. And you need to replace these ever, ever so, so often. You, often. You, and you can get you can these, order, order them. And replace the seal. So we're going to lock this down. Read your instructions because okay. your canner might be different. In this canner, you put two quarts of hot water before mm -hmm. you start. Okay. And what we're going to do is we, we do not put this on. This is a little cap. Okay. Here's a little secret. All right. You got two things. You got this little fella in the middle. This little, right. like a little metal thing. It will, it, will, it will pop up when it seals. Okay. But what you want to watch for is bubbles right here. Bubbles coming out of the top right. of this. There's and, and a tiny little hole in the top of that. And we're going to show you this. So, yeah, I can see. That looks to me like that may already be starting to kind of. Yeah, but maybe we want, not, we want but the maybe. bubbles to come okay. out. So that lets the air out. All right. So, very important. Very important. So, what I'm doing is I'm watching the gauge, which yeah. is on zero. Now you've locked this, correct? It's locked. This is locked. All right. And I'll just go ease this around. They can see the gauge. And we have it on high, as high as my stove will go. And that's where you start. You start on high. And we'll turn it around to let you see. I can hear it in there right. actually so starting. So what to... I'm waiting on is I'm, I'm wanting some water bubbles. Okay. And sometimes you'll get some, sometimes the, the air is done gone. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I, I do that first. I'll okay. watch. We will, we're going to watch that little valve for bubbles. Now this is... Um, you know, this is one of those things. I, I, I have done a hot pack canning method with my mother years ago. We canned tomatoes. And that is the most popular program I've ever done on this in however many years, 12 years, I think I'm starting my 12th year um, on Everyday Man, hundreds of shows. That is the number one program that I've ever done. I know there's an interest in canning and it's really having a revival right now. People want to preserve their food That's right. at home. Well, like, like I said, when we was doing the jars, I've, I've opened up deer meat past eight years. Mm -hmm. It's still good. Mm -hmm. You do lose nutrition value, at least after three or four years. Uh, but you, you don't really want to keep it for eight. That'll lose your flavor though. Like the reason why it was eight years, somehow it got lost and it was dated. Mm -hmm. And I had yeah. to find it, oh, I'll see what this, you know. And we're going to show you at the end of all this, because yeah. we're actually doing this. We don't have any prepared ahead because I've never done this. He's teaching me as he's teaching you of how to do this. And uh, so we're going to show everybody at the end how mm -hmm. to label your stuff. So. Just stay tuned for the, the final product here. And, and the jars, when you buy your new can, we go with the wide mouth. Okay. Yeah, and there's two sizes, the narrow. I don't remember what they, I think that's just called regular, isn't it? Regular. Isn't yeah. it called regular? Yeah. And then wide mouth. So we've got the wide mouth. Uh, let me just show everybody, because I do have some extras. Because yours holds seven quarts. Correct. This is what, what we've got in there filled. These are just, I just purchased these and ran them through my dishwasher. Yeah, that's what I was along with these. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Anytime you buy the, the new jars, I always put them through hot water mm -hmm. and dish. I mean, it's just it just you know you just yeah. want to make sure they're clean. Yeah. Uh, you can put these in your dishwasher or hand wash them, but not the flaps. No, uh, you can't. These you do not, and these are not reusable. These are reusable. Correct. Three times you say, and then you kind of lose your structure. Right. The, the the old way of canning, you, people kept them for many years yes. because it was different. This yeah. is pressure. Yeah. And so. 
after three, I have lost, like I said, five jars out of hundreds, but mm -hmm. it blows the bottom off. Okay. And so it's best if you press your can, I would go to new jars after the third time. And I want to add, and I know, I know this to be the case because I do canning of vegetables. I've just never done any meats or anything. See the water bubble? Okay, yeah, I saw a bubble. Yeah, that's bringing uh, the air out. Um, do not use regular jars no. like you buy mayonnaise, mayonnaise in no. a jar no. and you can, you do not use those jars for canning the integrity of the glass is not the same you want to make sure that you are using canning jars they're specifically for canning and i because my mama always used ball brand that's what i buy yeah. but i mean they, they have different brands out there but they're canning jars don't use your pickle and mayonnaise jars for pressure canning. They just, the glass is different. Totally different, that's, that's probably a tempered yeah. for, for pressure. So don't, because it, it could burst and shatter and you got a mess. And so when you're, when you're packing, like I said, this is an old one, so you can see it bubbles. But the principles are the same. All the same. Yeah, okay. Other than I have to start with two quarts, they may uh -huh. start with one, three, you gotta read Read, read your up. manual, okay. Uh, yeah, we can see some bubbles. Yeah. It'll, it'll get some heat. It's getting, you see that little bubble coming out of there? Yeah. yeah. That's a good uh, shot to show and when, people. And when you pack your jar, like I said, we we packed with, in case they didn't see. Beef uh, and chicken. And beef spice. and chicken. Yeah. Potatoes, carrots, and you flavors. You said you put cabbage in your oh, chicken yeah. sometimes. It, yeah. flavors the, it flavors the, the chicken. Now, let me ask a question. Is it normal to see the dripping coming sometimes out of here? Sometimes these older ones is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's okay yeah. if you see yeah. that. Make sure yours is well, locked. Well, the newer one, the newer one, you probably ain't gonna have probably it. Probably ain't gonna have that, okay. <laughs> I did order a canner, a pressure canner. I actually have a Presto. Um, it's, it's, I've ordered it, but I didn't know how to use it. So we're learning together and I'm excited about that. So I'm watching for the bubbles coming yeah, out. How, how, some. at what point is enough well, some, of that? Uh, well, sometimes this will click up. Okay. And when it does, I'll let my pressure go. It'll barely move up, and okay. then I'll cap. And we'll show but you that when right. the, he's watching this, because you, again, you said before, you don't walk away from this. You do not take calls while you're pressure canning. Yeah. You. You got to babysit Because you this. may, yeah, you babysit. You may forget. It's not that all of a sudden everybody's getting killed by them. I, I've never heard of one explode. I'm sure they have, but if if it happened, somebody left it. So, let's see where we're at. I'm just seeing see this little this, flutters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would but say this. Now, will this start moving? If this seals, it won't okay. until that seals. Okay, so the, the pressure won't start moving until the, and every canner is gonna, even a pressure cooker yep, yep. has, even your instant pots have that little valve that pops up when now, it gets pressure. I can pressure. start that moving here in just in a moment, but I'm waiting to make sure I like to get all the air out. It's just. So that's pumping up all the air out yeah, of the inside right. of, so you, okay. You still, see, you still see some bubbles jumping. Okay, yeah. Oh, I like that it, it, it's, it's releasing the air from inside that sealed container because you gotta get that out to build up the pressure. I see, I understand that part. So let's see if we, and sometimes you'll feel a straight, what you want to feel is straight air. And see, I don't feel none at the moment. It just goes. Okay. Let me, this is the I... older one. So yeah, you feel I see some. That. Yeah, this, you can it, feel. It'll have a straight, it'll shoot yeah. straight up. It's sporadic though, right, okay. Yeah. So let's see. But all, irregardless, um, even if you got a brand new one in the box, it, you still, these steps are the same for your pressure cookers. Uh, you gotta make sure, read your directions, but you've gotta make sure that the little valve is doing what it's supposed to do and that little pressure gauge there and is And you can doing. buy new gauges and stuff, and plus, this is something very helpful. Yeah, you're you, gonna need one of those. When you get your yeah. cans out. They make, um, and I've seen these at like Walmart, different places. And you brought up a good store that I honestly never would have thought to go look for canning supplies, and that's tractor supplies. Yeah. Um, but they make little kits of, of items that you might need, like those little handles and the little, uh, we just used a knife to go down in the side to get the air bubbles out. But there are, you know, supplies that you can buy for this. 
Well, you can tell them some of the spices if you like. Oh, I'm yeah. Kinda... What I did, if you missed, because we're just watching that coming up, and he'll stop us when we're ready. I, d I did a mixture of beef and chicken. Uh, I used sirloin steak because that's what was on sale. But you could use any kind of beef that you wanted. Uh, I did two whole ones in one jar, and then I cubed it in another jar. And I added potatoes and just little red potatoes and little baby potatoes, I should say. I had a few left over. Um, I'll just pop these in the air fryer and roast them. But the little small ones like that are perfect. Little baby carrots that we bought. Let me just grab them. I, I put all this up, but I should have just left it out. In case you did miss part one and two, um, just the little prepared baby carrots. And this to, be on, is, to be honest with you, it's better than getting the big ones and cutting, cutting them, them up. It's, it's just... And, and I did buy, because I, I got what he told me to get. Uh, in the produce department of your grocery store, you will find a little square container called mirepoix, which is cut up carrot, celery, and onion. Basis for so many dishes and it's already chopped up for you. This is one time, you know, your time is important, and I think it, it, it really is better just to buy the, the already yeah. cut up yeah, stuff. Like I said. Unless you, you have a sous chef that wants to chop right, it all for if, you. <laughs> if you figure out the weight, you're not saving very much. No, you're really not. So. And uh, so we added, you know, you could add whatever vegetables. Um, he adds this mushroom sometimes, cabbage sometimes, broccoli sometimes. You wouldn't want to use things that just go to mush. Yeah, if, if you use mushrooms, you want the big ones. The big mushrooms. They don't, yeah. But, you know, I customized the spices. We did use, in all of them, there are either beef bouillon for the beef or chicken bouillon for the chicken, one teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt, and one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar with the mother. That's in all of them and then and either chicken stock or beef stock and distilled water to cap it off with not regular tap water but distilled water because it doesn't have the chlorine, chlorine and the still. fluoride and the different things in it you want pure distilled water um but i added i bought just the uh well let me just grab them right here they are i bought i used up my pot pie mix but i got these just spice packets from the grocery store. Get whatever flavor you like. I've got one here that's a brown sugar bourbon. It doesn't have alcohol in it. That's just a flavoring. And it's got molasses and brown sugar spices, garlic, pepper, paprika, different things in it. Then I got a tomato, garlic, and basil. And I added some garlic powder, some rosemary, some thyme out of my spice pantry. Whatever you want to add. And cream of celery soup cream of celery in my soup. chicken. So, so it's I just think we can ready cap. to go. I don't, see okay. a, I don't see too many bubbles. So All we'll, right, we'll, put that on. And that just jumped up. Okay, can you let's can we turn this just yep. a dot? Can you see how that little thing right there came up? It popped up. That's your pressure valve. Okay. Now we're going to start watching this go up, and I'll, we'll turn it. The the actual gauge. Yep. Okay. You, you want to can you want to can under the, the pressure past 10, 12 to ten. You don't want that's where you want to can. Okay. And you want to can one hour. In our area. Yeah. I would imagine area. higher altitudes. Al altitudes might be a are different. different. Yeah, yeah, but in our viewing area. Ch I mean, uh, deer meat, I can an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, once, once it comes up to pressure. Once it comes up to pressure. Okay. Once that gauge, once the timing doesn't start now. The timing starts when this little pressure gauge hits 10. What is that? Like pounds per. PSI, is that basically what it is? Oh, it's a temperature thing too, 240, okay. Um, and we'll show you that, it's starting to rise. I'm watching it, it looked like it went up just, just a hair, maybe one degree. You know, as soon as you go past 10, okay. and you, you see it hitting 12, you start easing your power down on you your stove. You have to control very your heat. Slowly, yeah, very slowly, not slow. fast or it drops too quick. Right. So you just kind of go down with it. You have to adjust depending. You can do this on a gas stove too. I have a gas stove at home. Actually, I think heat's a little easier to control on gas. Yeah, it is, you can back it with um, But, you know, no matter what, whether you have the, the, this type, which is just the glass top, or you have the coil kind of yeah. stove that a lot of us still have, um, you can can on any of that. You could, can, I've seen people do different cannings on their grill. We, uh, when we, when we need, 
We taught that on the Dave Star Show in Hawaii. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They actually had a, a big gas LP like type a, grill. Like a grill. Yes, yeah, so you could do uh, this outdoors if you wanted. You just have to control the heat. That's the key. Now, I know my mama had, my mama did a lot of canning in her younger days. She actually had a second stove in her garage, which was attached to the house, um, that she did all of her canning out there to keep the heat out of the kitchen. But she didn't have AC. Yep, it's starting to go up now. I see it. Okay. We're going to show you. We're going to get a good close-up shot. But the process, this process is the same no matter what is in this jar. Am I right? That's correct. And could you do this pressure canning instead of like hot water pack, that kind of thing, with anything? You can pressure can anything. The fish is the hardest because it falls apart. Yeah, and so okay. You, you can't, you but like if, if I wanted to make jams and jellies, can you pressure can the jams and jellies? Well, I'm assuming you can, but the thing about it is... Or is that I'd, better with the hot water pack? Maybe better the better with the hot water, water canner. Yeah. There's two different ways to, to can. But with, I know mama always pressure canned green beans. Well, they say, like I said, USDA says mm -hmm. any vegetables or meat, this is the safest. Okay, all right. And so, um, this is exciting. I don't, with, I don't go with that. I just go with the fact that it has worked before. <laughs> this man has canned, how many, how many jars of food have you canned in the years? Hundreds well, of jars. Yeah, last, in the last two months, I was canned 150. Okay, so uh, he knows what he's yeah. doing. And that's why he's doing this and teaching me and teaching you because we need to learn how to do this. Well, plus if, you know, like this one has seven. Okay, yeah, seven jars. The, That's what mine holds. I'm pretty sure the one they got to, uh, the last time I taught was, was it over 20? I mean, it was unreal. Yeah, some you, of them are bigger than others. But you don't want that if you got a stove like this. No, no. Uh, this is This is perfect for seven the whole canner, yeah. yeah. All right, now we turned it around so Austin can get a good shot here. It's almost a 10. It's at like nine and a half right now. Yeah, you want, you want to pressure can beef and chicken no lower than 10 pounds. Okay. I usually keep it around 12. Okay. One solid hour. Okay. Once it gets to the pressure. Once it gets to 10, do we want to start our timing? No, I usually wait. Wait till it gets to uh, 12. Once it starts moving, it goes pretty quick. Yeah. I usually, when it hits about 12, start easing it down. It'll sometimes go up to 14. I still ease it down. It, it works real, it, it's pretty neat. I'm going to get my phone, get my timer going for one hour, and you tell me when to start it. Right now. Start my timing. All yep. right. Okay. It's at 10. It is. We're just going to watch it for a second. We need to back down our heat. Now, here is where your stove might be different than mine. You need to, you know, adjust... Depending Very slowly. on your stuff. You do not slow. just fast. Don't go, like my settings go from one to nine. Don't go from nine to five. That's too much of a drastic much. heat. So back it down by degrees. We're going to go down one now. Okay, I'm going to go down to eight. Okay. Because I want to control that. If I left that on nine, that pressure would just go up too right. high. And you're, you're watching the. You know, I'm watching this gauge still, right here. Yeah. This is what we're watching. Because we got a monitor right there so we can see it. It looks to me All like right, it's about we're 12. Go one more. We're going to go down one more to seven. And once it starts holding steady. It, it will hold steady when you, and I know this sounds crazy, but it'll hold steady usually when you're down about two. Oh, so you back down your heat a lot. A whole okay, lot once okay. it gets this pressure. All right. So now we're going to go down one more. Okay, we were on seven, so I'm going to six. I'm going to leave it there a moment. You just got to watch that gauge to watch how it fluctuates. And guys, if you see a, on your little valve, now don't be moving this. Can you, come, can you back out just a little bit, Austin? Um, this little thing right here, if you see little pieces of water bubbling out of leave there, it it's okay. Yeah. This little and valve back here. sometimes even around the sides, I got a little, you know. Mama always called that the little jiggler. Yeah. If you see little bits of water coming out of that jiggler, Leave it's okay. It. Right. Do not, do not take that off right. of there. And no. you may see some air bubbles around the yeah. side like here. No problem. We still got the temperature. Okay. Do we? We're, no, we're still about. Uh, we're still at, so you think it's good for here for now? 
Uh, we'll back it down. It's going up. Go ahead and go down one more. One more. Okay. Now I'm on six. All right. And we're timing. Our timing has started. We're at 57.49. And then we're going to... Okay, we can, we can uh, come back okay. and show them. All right. But here's the, here is the secret. Okay. You watch this gauge. You do not leave this gauge. Yeah, you got to watch that. Okay. And, and you back your stove down real slow. To keep it steady. Keep, keep it steady. It now, what is the pressure now? We give us a shot. Can you of give the me pressure. a shot? We're at twelve. It's All been right. staying at twelve. Just, just leave it there just for a moment, then. Okay. And uh, we will come back later, and we we'll will... come back in fifty-seven minutes, my time. Just a second in your time. We'll be back when this is done, and I'll show you how to. We'll show you how to unload it all. We'll be back in a minute. Why are you Okay, it has been an hour at babysitting is the understatement for that. <laughs> that's a, oh yeah, that's of exactly right. Of course, this right. was my first time and he let me monitor and just, you know, guided me through it. But you really, really have to stay. We started out, remember, on my stove, which goes from one to nine. We started out at nine to bring it up to pressure. And then we backed it down, eight, seven, six, five, Four, held it at four a little bit, three. Then I think at one point we went down to two. Then we brought it back up to three to maintain that pressure. You have to watch that gauge right there. And, and we kept it between 10 and, and it kind of went up to 13 yeah, once and we yeah. started backing down the heat. When it starts rising above that 13, we back down the heat one degree on my stove. You so, know, you might yeah, have to go from- Very little, yeah medium to medium low, whatever right, on your right, stove. Right. But you do have to monitor that. You don't, you see that caution? You don't want it to get up there. So now our hour is up. And Brother Steve, what do we need to do now? Well, it's gonna take turn probably- Turn the stove off. It's, it's, yeah, turn your stove off. It's probably gonna take 10, 15 minutes before it zeroes out. Before the gauge, the this gauge, gauge right. goes oh, wrong way, down to zero. Correct. So we're. We're going to come back when that gauge is zero and 10 minutes has passed and beyond that. Beyond that. Okay. Then we'll take this little fella okay. here off. Okay. And if there's any steam, it'll come out okay. there. Okay. So we're just going to, I just wanted you to see that the stove is off. We're going to wait until the gauge goes to zero and then an additional 10 minutes and then we'll be back. But cannot emphasize enough, watch the gauge. Yes, you do have to watch that gauge. you got to bathe every... Three or four minutes, yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, it's, it's still at 12. All right, we're all right, leave it alone. Right. Oh, it's gone up to 14. All right, yeah. let's back it down. Up, yeah. oh, went down to 11. All right, let's turn it. And you remember, it's only watch. one hour. Yeah, it's only yeah. an hour. It's not, a, we, we talked yeah, and right, watched right. videos, had a good time. So we'll be back when pressure's gone and show you how to undo all this, yep. the final product. Alrighty, now it took about 16 minutes for the pressure gauge to go to zero. You see how it's at zero? And the little metal, I don't know if you can, yeah, there we go. This little metal thing right here went down. So we know that we're good to go. Right, so we're gonna take off this little fella and we can tell there's nothing. And uh, Now what if there were a little bit of steam coming yeah, out of that? No problem. Should Just you wait, wait till that stops? Wait. Okay, Correct. wait till if you have steam, do not try that till that little gauge is at zero. If you have steam coming out of here, you need to wait till that stops. All right. And again, we want to emphasize you watch the gauge. You do not leave it. No, you do not. Because no. right when you think it's stuck there, it moves. It will move. You've got to babysit that and adjust your heat up or down to keep it between 10 and 12, 12 Yeah, don't, don't go below 10 no. with the beef and the chicken. If it goes starts going down, you want to raise that heat on your stove. So One we, degree or, you know. So we are going to go Now inside. we're ready to take it off and see. And I have laid out just a couple of towels to set it on, kitchen towels, clean kitchen towels. 
Okay. That's steam. Yeah, be careful. Gonna... Take the lid off away from your face. Yep. I'm gonna set it right here just a second. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. So excited. Now you actually can, with this screen in here, take them all out at the same time. Oh, okay. Do you want to do that or do you want well, to just use your little tongs? Let's be safe and just use the tongs. <laughs> yeah, that might be best. Yeah. You want me to move this over? No, or that's fine. You want to move the canard over here? Or are we good? We're good. That, that has a little rubber grip on it, so it grips that really, really well. And you want to take them out. And now, Austin, can you get a good shot in here? You see how that's still boiling? Yeah, it hasn't sealed yet. That's the reason yeah. why you just leave it alone. Leave it alone. But you see how that's still boiling? Leave it be. Don't. And do not touch the top of the. No. You seal it yourself. You Leave do, it alone. It has to seal itself. And you'll hear a little when it seals. That's kind of what it sounds like. There's my chicken. This is beef. That's chicken. Yum, yum, yum. There's a beef. Separate them a little bit because these are hot. You've got to let this cool. This part I know because of doing tomatoes. There, that's boiling hot. You can see it's still bubbling in there. There's a chicken. And you've got a little water on top. That's okay. That'll eventually Don't just evaporate touch usually. it. Don't, Don't touch try it. to dab that off. Just leave it be. Leave the rings on. And this will take several hours to cool down, won't it? Yes. So we're just going to leave it alone. Until it, it until seals it's itself. cold and the seals. Now, how you know it's sealed? The can lid is a little bit up, and it will it'll it'll depress into almost like a little bit of a concave action, and you'll know it's sealed. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, you would want to touch the tops and to if, make sure it's sealed. To tomorrow. make sure it's sealed, right? If when you touch it, it goes down. You need to put it, it in the fridge Go ahead and, eat, and it. eat it. Correct. You know, maybe a day or two, but eat it. But when you touch it, if it doesn't do anything, then you know it's sealed. When they're cool, you will want to date it. Like I would put 6 slash 20 for June of 20. Yep. And what it is, chicken, beef with carrots or whatever it is that you've put in. And then I store mine, and you said you store yours with yeah. the rings on. I do. Some people take the rings off. I don't do that. Leave the, it's best, I think it's best to leave them on, but it's... Yeah. But there you go. Old-timers have their they, own way of Yeah, that. they do, but I leave mine on. So there you go. That is canning meat 101, <laughs> 2, 3, 4, and 5. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Steve, for coming in. We're out of time. But this has been a series, and, and we're going to show you this. Now, I'm going to show you... I'm going to... He says it's best to leave it for, a, like four to six months to let those flavors fully marry. So it, I'm probably gonna give it about a month. And then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with some of this and show you how to use your canned oh, meat yeah. in a dish. So thank you for joining with us. Thank you for teaching us and showing us how to properly can our meat products. And you could totally do a stew, you could do whatever you wanted. We'll come up with some ideas and I'll share them with you later. Thank you for joining with us, and we will see you next time on Everyday Manna.